All right. First and foremost, I want to give call Hello, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All praise to the Most High God. The name is only begotten Son, who will anyone be called Jesus Christ. It's your brother, Tazza Pani by Yahweh, the officer of the Sakari Chicago set, coming back at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. With a quick edifying video. Um, I want to go into the biblical um, definition of the word lock, right? meaning locks of hair you know um a lot of brothers try to use certain scriptures to justify having dreadlocks and a lot of the scriptures that they use we're going to come to find out that they are twisting them to fit the narrative that they would like to have because they want to keep the dreadlocks um i've done previous videos on this before and i'll probably do um, a lot more attacking different angles, you know, because um, Hebrew Israelites got to get out of this whole uh, dreadlock phase, you know. Um, I want to say it probably started back with um, Lil Wayne, uh, Chief Keith, Little John, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, the resurgence of Wayne when he switched his style, he started to grow his dreadlocks, you know, and then a lot of um, younger Jakes started to take to the hairstyle. And then a couple years after that, when he went through the Carter series, you have uh, people like, uh, you know, Chief Keith, you know, and, and a plethora of other um, influential, you know, rappers to the youth that um, helped perpetuate, you know, the whole dreadlock craze. Right. But um, dreadlocks are a heathen custom. And when you see the word locks in the Bible, it's not talking about a dreaded lock. And we're going to further prove that by just going into the scriptures. We're going to go into the Hebrew. We're going to get some etymology, you know, and we're probably going to even look at a couple of Google images, you know, to show you um, basically what certain words are. Give you a visual. Right. So we're going to start in Numbers 6 and 5, and this pertains to the Nazarite vow. So let's go ahead and get it. Um, mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> it's taking a little time to go. All right. This is Numbers, Numbers 6 and 5. And the days of the vow of his separation, talking about the Nazarite vow, there should be no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled <clears throat> in the which he separateth himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair and, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Right. So we're going to go down into the Hebrew and see this word for lock. Right. Where is it at? Uh. Locks of his hair, para, right? It's the word para in the Hebrew. H six five, H six five, four five, right? Outline of biblical uses: hair, long hair, of head, locks, right? Let's read the Strong's para from H six five four four. The hair, right? So clearly, locks just mean hair. Uh, as disheveled locks right so any hair on your head is considered a lock of hair all right it just means hair in this context the, the Hebrew agrees with that and in the context of the verse it actually tells you the definition of the verse let me let me just go back certain verses just give you the biblical definition off top you know Sometimes you don't even have to actually go into the word. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall be no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and he shall let the locks of the hair, the locks of the hair of his head grow. So locks in this context is only talking about hair. It's not talking about a dreaded lock. It's not talking about a matted lock. It just says the locks of the hair. It just means hair. P. 
period all right um, let's get another one let me go back let's get another scripture because I think there's three different Hebrew words for the word lock so we just um, we just went to the first definition which is para right now let's go to Judges 6 and 13 because a different Hebrew word is used here for the word lock right so let's go into this dealing with the brother Samson from the tribe of Dan right this is Judges 6 and 13 and Delilah said unto Samson hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound and he said unto her if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web right so let's go into this word locks and see what it's talking about right the word locks here is H4253 let's go into it go into this Hebrew <clears throat> and I'm going to try to pronounce this the best as I can Makalapa Makalapa right Makalapa outline of biblical usage braid right braid lock plate of hair right let's read the Strong's definition from H2498 a ringlet of hair as gliding over each other lock let's look up this word ringlet right ringlet let's see what a ringlet is is ringlet a dreadlock let's see ringlet <clears throat> let's see ringlet all right here we go a lock of hair hanging in a corkscrew shaped curl a brown butterfly that has wings bearing eye spots that are typically highlighted by a polar color okay so basically we're gonna go with the first definition that pertains to hair right because the other one pertains to a butterfly um, so let's read this definition right here ringlet haircut a ringlet is a type of hairstyle ringlets are often also known as princess curls or corkscrew curls it is achieved by wrapping a lock of hair around the length of a thin curling iron or can be done naturally by people with sufficiently tightly curled hair the curls can be also achieved by hair rollers right so this is just talking about curly hair all right so let's go back to it um, it says a ringlet of hair as gliding over one another then in the biblical usage it flat out tells you a braid a lock a plait let's go into this word plait right let's go into this word let's see what comes up when we put up the plate right um, here we go plate a single length of hair of other flexible material made up of three or more interlaced strands a braid right okay matter of fact let's just go ahead and look at some images of this you know plate right or plat or whatever you want to call it look all you see is braids 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 French braids all type of braids right so the locks that Samson had were not dreadlocks they were indeed braids he had seven braids in his hair alright let's go get another one so that's two definitions you know that strike against them saying dreadlocks or even describing a dreadlock alright uh, let's go back <clears throat> okay so there's another one in Judges 16 and 19 but this is the same word that's used in Judges 16 and 13 that we just did so let's try Nehemiah 3 and 3 because I'm pretty sure it's three definitions for it's three different words different Hebrew words for that word lock so let's see what Nehemiah 3 and 3 says 
it's one more so let's get it bear with me computer going a little slow all right there we go let's go um, okay yeah here goes the third definition so let's read this Nehemiah 3 and 3 but the fish gate did the sons of Hanessa build who also laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof the locks thereof the bars thereof yeah this lock is pretty much talking about like for a door I'm pretty sure uh so let's just go to it uh lock door okay lock right h4514 h4514 and it says a boat right so this is talking about like an actual lock to a door right something to secure the door that you know you uh you lock it closed all right um i think it's it might be four definitions for the word lock I'm looking for another one that is in the context of hair. In the context of hair. So let me go through these other scriptures and see what I can find. Um, so that was Nehemiah 3 and 3. Let's try another one. Matter of fact, the Psalms of Solomon. Here, yeah, let's go to the Psalms of Solomon. Let's see here. Um, there are bars, okay. And set up the doors, okay. That's the same word for locks. Doors, there are, that's lock. Okay. Here we go. Song of Solomon 4 and 1. Let's get this. Let's see what word is used here. Let's see if this is talking about dreadlocks. Right? Because it uses that word lock, right? So, this is Songs of Solomon 4 and 1. But behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead, right? So, in the context, we know this is talking about, you know, this is referring to hair, right? So, let's go. Okay, here goes the other word, right? This is the this is the third definition you know for um the word lock as it pertains to hair is one definition that pertains to an actual lock to a door or a bolt you have three definitions three different hebrew words that go into this word lock in the context of hair so let's see what this one says this is h6777 right tazama i think i think that's what it says um tazama and we're going to go down and this is says outline of biblical uses veil a woman's veil right uh, let's read the strong's definition from an unused root meaning to fasten a veil so this isn't even talking about here this is talking about a woman's veil okay so and we know what a veil is but just for the hell of it let's get it veil This is a veil. All right. See? That has nothing to do with a damn dreadlock. All right. So, I want to go through as many as I can just to pound the point home that when you see the word locks in the Bible, when it's referring to hair, it's not talking about a dreadlock. You have one word that's talking about a braid and another word that's just talking about hair, period. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So that was Songs of Solomon four and one. All right. Let's do Songs of Solomon four and three. All right. Let's see what word this uses. <clears throat> this is Song of Solomon four and three. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. 
Thy templates are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Let's look at this word for locks. And it's the same word that means veil. So I don't even have to go into this. This is not talking about hair. All right. Let's go on to the next. Don't want this video to be too long, but you know, for edification's sake, it's just certain things that I that I have to go into and bring out. Um, <laughs> so basically, probably all of these in, in Song of Solomon are probably will probably be the same, the same thing. Uh, let's try Song of Solomon five and eleven. Let's try this. This might be talking about here. Let's see. Matter of fact, this is talking about here. All right. Song of Solomon 5 and 1. Is it 5 and 1? No, 5 and 11. I mean, it needs to go down. Okay, this is Song of Solomon 5 and 11. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. Right? Let's go to this word locks. Oh, th here goes another Hebrew word. This is another Hebrew word. But let's go into this. All right, this is H6977. And this outline of biblical usage. Look, look at that. Lock. Locks of hair. Okay. Feminine passive particle uh participle of H6972 in its original sense, a forelock. Right, a forelock as shorn lock. Let's look up this word forelock. Let's see what a forelock is. Is a forelock a damn dreadlock? Well, let's let's see. Let's see. Let's go into this word forelock. Right, forelock. <clears throat> forelock, a lock of hair growing just above the forehead. Right, the part of the mane of horse or similar animal which grows from the pole and hangs down over the forehead. So this is just hair above your forehead. That's all this is. Let's look at some of these images. See, does anything? Does any of this resemble a dreadlock? This is a forelock. This right here. That right there. We see this on horses. You know, these are not dreaded locks. All right. These are not matted, you know, twisted up dead ass hair. All right. Now, what I want to do. Oh, let me see how many more scriptures we got. Let's see how many more we have here. <clears throat> Before I want, because I want to go into the etymology of all these words we have. Let me write them down so I don't forget. So lock here we have four lock. We have lock. We have plate. Ringlet. All right? All right. Go back. Oh damn. Went back too far. Salakia. Salakia, Salakia, Salakia. All right. This is where I need to be. All right. So we just did Songs of Solomon five and eleven, right? Let's go to okay. Isaiah forty-seven and two because nine times out of ten, Songs of Solomon six and seven. This is probably the same word or not. You know what? Let's just check it for the hell of it. Let's just check it for the hell of it. Why not, right? It's only two more scriptures after this anyway. You know, I try not to make these videos so long because I know Jake has a very short attention span, but hell, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, these things got to come out. Uh, locks, yep. This is talking about a veil. It's that same word that means veil. So this is not um, in the context of uh, a lock of hair. So there's no reason for me to go into it. Already went into it and showed the definition. Uh, let's see, Isaiah 4 and 12. I mean, 4, 47 and 2, Salakia. 
Let's see what this is, right? Isaiah 47 and 2. Take the millstones and grind mill. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers, right? So let's look at this word lock. Where are we at? Locks. This is also talking about a veil. It's that same word that means veil in the Hebrew, right? So we don't even have to go into that. We're already done. We have one more. One more scripture to go to in Ezekiel. And then we're going to get the etymology. Then we're going to wrap up. <clears throat> Boom. Uh, this is Ezekiel 44 and 20. Neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. All right. Pole means to um like trim. Okay. So. Let's see. Let me just go into this word pole right quick to make sure that I'm not um disseminating any misinformation. Let me just make sure that I know what this is talking about. Pole. Right. To cut, clip, trim, shear. All right. So I was right. All praises. All right. Let's go back. Let's go back and get this word lock right. Locks, para, again, right? It's just talking about hair. We went into this. This is the first definition that we went into, para, right? Boom. Hair, long hair of head, locks. All right, so that wraps this up. None of these Hebrew words are um, expressing or conveying or describing a dreaded lock, a, a matted lock, all right? So... Let's go to etymology. Let's just go into the study of words, right? At my own line, this is what I want. So we got four words that were brought up within a lot of these definitions, a lot of these Hebrew definitions. So we're just going to get the etymology on these words just to drive the point home. Uh, let's start with, well, no, let's just start with lock, right? Lock. <clears throat> All right. Lock now one. That's talking about fastening the door, so we don't need to go into that. I think I need, oh, you know what? Not just lock. I probably need to put in locks. And then it'll pop up. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, no, that's not it. Um, let me go back. Lock now one. Okay, related entries and more. Let's go down here. Okay, here we go. Lock two. Trees of hair, right? Old English lock, lock of hair, curl, right? Just like what it said for ringlet, curly hair. From Proto Germanic Lucos, source also of Old Norse, Lacour, Old Saxon, Old Frisian, Dutch lock, Old High Germanic lock, German lock of hair, right? A word of uncertain origin, according to OED, perhaps from a pi lungos, and related to Greek ligos, plaint, twig, white, Luthanian, lugnas, flexible, right? So, it's just talking about hair, all right? Uh, it's the etymology a lot. Let's go into... Four, four lock. Is that even in here? Yes, it is. All right. Four lock now. Lock of hair growing above the forehead. Old English for locker, for lock. 
All right. Opportunity has hair in front. Um, behind, she is bald. If you seize her by the forelock, you may hold her. But if she once escapes, not Jupiter himself can catch her again. Dictionary of Latin quotations, proverbs, maxims, and, and mottos. H.T. Riley, London, 1866. So this is basically using the word. It's showing in a sentence how it's using the word, showing you what it's talking about, you know, and the definition, lock of hair growing above the forehead, right? Not a dreadlock. All right. Uh, let's get this word. Play. Play. Um, okay. Plate. Verb, right? Late 14th century. To fold, gather in plates. Also to braid or weave. From old French, polier to fold. Variant of polier, polier, to fold, being from Latin, plicare, to fold, from pi root, plec, to plat, related, plated, plating, right? Let's see what else we got here. Let's see. So, okay, plate now. A fold, a crease, from Anglo-French, plate, old French, pl pl ploit. Early a pleat, fold manner of folding, from from Latin plicatus, past participle of plicare to fold, to to lay, fold, twist, right? Uh, meaning interlace strands of hair. This is talking about a braid, ribbon, etc. Is from the 1520s, perhaps from plate that we just went into that definition, right? And that means to braid. So we have one more ringlet. Let's go into this word ringlet. And then we can close out. This video is probably a little bit longer than what I expected, but hey, it is what it is, right? Ringlet now, right? Uh let's see. This says from ring, diminutive suffix of hair of hair right since the 1600s related ringletted um let me see if i can get more out of this see if i can get a little bit more out of this okay no i can't that's all this here but i just showed you what a ringlet was so this is a four lock This is a plate. Um, ring with. These are ringlets of hair, right? And let's go to locks of hair. See, all right, show you something, right? Crochet braids, right? You have braids that are called locks, and then you just have regular long hair that's called locks. You know, none of this gives you dreadlocks. You know, this is not talking about a damn dreaded lock, all right? So when people try to go to these verses, we I just looked up every verse that's possible to look up in the Bible that uses the word lock. I think it's mentioned 15 times in any of the um, times that it's referencing hair. It's not talking about a dreaded lock. It's either just talking about hair, period, in general, or it's talking about braids. All right. It's also a word for lock that means um, a veil. All right. So, um. With that, I'm going to say it and say, uh, Shalom. Y'all watching my Shabbat Rock of Thah. And, you know, I'm out, man. All right.